All right, 225. Let's start on the dot. Um, doesn't seem like there are folks waiting to come in, or maybe they are. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm, this is the deep dive talk for the Vitesse Open Source Project. And we wrote this talk with the assumption that people have some background on Vitesse. How many of you uh, don't know anything about Vitesse? A fair, um, fair number. So okay, so I do have some slides where I'm going to uh, talk about the concepts. I'll go slow and in, in more detail. Feel free to stop us and ask questions during the talk. Um, we'll try to answer them as we go. Um, what we are going to talk about today is how to solve GDPR or data locality issues at the database layer using Vitesse, right? That's what jurisdiction-aware databases, what we mean by jurisdiction-aware uh, databases. Um, My name is Deepti Sigredi. I'm a maintainer of Vitesse, and I'm a software engineer at PlanetScale. My name is Jitain Vaidya. I am the CEO of PlanetScale. PlanetScale is a company that Sugu and I founded about 18 months ago for uh, ma making uh, Vitesse accessible to uh, companies and enterprises. I also used to uh, manage the SRE and DBA teams at YouTube, which operated Vitesse at massive scale. Um, so here is the problem, right? Like, you guys know that different jurisdictions are uh, passing laws that say that the data for the users which belong to that particular jurisdiction should not leave the jurisdiction. Uh, we saw this with, in Europe with GDPR. California has now um, passed a similar legislation will, which will go into effect fairly soon. And so many different people are thinking about how to support this. And most of the approaches involve basically re-architecting your applications where you introduce the notion of which jurisdiction a particular user's data belongs to at the application layer. What we are proposing is that you, in, you sort of encapsulate that logic in Vitesse so that your application doesn't need to be aware of it. And that's what we are going to sh show you. Similarly, uh, you're, you have existing monolithic databases that are sitting somewhere. Maybe some of them are in the jurisdiction that you want, some of them are not. And migrating those databases now, and also maybe splitting the data, because you might have uh, users which span multiple, multiple jurisdictions. So how do you, uh, migrating those databases into jurisdiction-aware databases becomes an operational nightmare. So how do we solve that? So those are the problems that we are going to talk about today using Vitesse. So the way we have structured the talk is that I'm going to first start out by talking about a little bit about Vitesse, different concepts in Vitesse. And once you have enough of an understanding of the concepts that we will use to solve these problems, we will talk, I'll talk to you about the solution. And then Deepthi is going to do a demo that actually shows you four clusters running in four different Kubernetes uh, well, a key space that runs across four Kubernetes clusters in four different parts of the world um, in which we write the data, and you can see it doing the right thing. So that's the demo that Deepthi is going to show you. That's how we have structured the talk. So this is the Vitesse architecture diagram that you all know and love, most of you. Um, VT gate is the stateless proxy, supports MySQL binary protocol, has a full SQL parser, gives your application the view that it's talking to a single humongous database, when behind it are multiple shards. So what a shard is, what a key space is, uh, all of that we will be going, all those concepts we'll be talking about in further detail later, because all those concepts you need to understand uh, to understand how to architect these clusters. Um, but each shard is basically a MySQL cluster with one master, multiple replicas, um, replicating using MySQL binary protocol. Each MySQL ID gets a binder process that's called VT tablet. VT tablet protects that MySQL ID and also does many other, um, you know, it, it, it helps you during reparenting, it helps you during backups, uh, a, lo a lot of those things. Topology server stores two different things. One is the, uh, the topology in terms of the IP address, host uh, IP address, 
port numbers of the various processes. And the second is description of how uh, each table in a sharded key space is sharded, right? So those two, that two, two types of information in the topology server, VTCTLD is the control plane. So once again, um, this is the architecture of the VTS. Keep this diagram in your mind as I talk about the various concepts. So the first concept I'm going to talk about is cell. So this diagram doesn't show you a cell, but each of these shards, which has one master and multiple replicas, they need to be resident somewhere, right? They need to be resident in some bit of servers and network infrastructure, be it a Kubernetes cluster, um, a region, an availability zone. So basically, a cell for Vitesse is a failure domain isolated from failures in other cells, which is a group of servers and network infrastructure, right? So an example, if you're running on-prem, could be a full data center or even a rack in a data center, right? Or it could be an availability zone in the region. Uh, it could be a region itself or it could be a Kubernetes cluster. So anything which is, so what I want to point out is that a cell basically has physical properties to it. So it is resident in some physical location, which means that it's resident in a jurisdiction. And so we are going to use this property to figure out how to build these clusters. Now let's talk a little bit about a key space. So in a sharded system, a data, like Vitesse, we call a database key space. So if your key space has a single shard, then a key space is no different from a MySQL database. If there are multiple shards, there are, these are multiple databases, but each of them has identical schema, right? Um, so in either case, the key space appears as a single database from the standpoint of the application. Um, now let's talk about what a key space ID is. This is a little bit of an interesting concept. Those of you who have worked with key value stores probably know that a key space ID is what a key value store typically uses for sharding, right? But in Vitesse, we never actually store a key space ID for every row. So a key space is split up into key space ID ranges, which are shards. Each row is assigned a key space ID, which is sort of the street address of a row. So uh, using the key space ID, Vitesse figures out which shard a particular row should go into, right? It's internal to Vitesse. The application doesn't need to know about it, and it's not stored but computed. And that gives us a lot of flexibility. And we'll talk about this a little further. Now, let's talk about what a Vindex is. A Vindex is how you tell, so we have uh, extended the relational semantics and the way relational databases have schemas, sharded databases in Vitesse have also have V schemas, and the way a table has an index, a table has a Vindex in Vitesse. What is a Vindex? A Vindex is a way for Vitesse to compute key space ID for rows in a particular table. There are two elements to a Vindex. One is, a, is the column that you want to use for sharding that particular table, and the second is the sharding function that you want to use. Since we allow you to arbitrarily choose any column to, as the sharding column for a table, depending on the type of that column, you might want to use different function. So if it's a numeric column, you would typically want to use hash. If it's a, uh, you know, varchar text or something like that, you would probably want to use loose MD5 hash or something like that. So we allow you to associate, define a index for every table using a column and a sharding function. Um, so the example that I'm giving you here is that, let's say that there's a, a, a table called customer and you want to shard it using ID, which happens to be a numeric column, and you want to, the sharding function that you want to use is hash. So for a row whose ID is one, two, three, the key space ID would be hash of one, two, three. Pretty straightforward, right? Again, computed, not stored. Um, what's a shard? So a shard basically has a begin and an end value for key space IDs. So if Vitesse wants to figure out whether a particular row belongs in a particular shard, all that it has to do is to evaluate that condition, begin less than key space ID, less than equal to end, and that, that gives you the answer. Uh, if this holds true, then the row for which it has computed that key space ID belongs in that shard, otherwise it doesn't, 
right? And a key space is basically a collect collection of shards, shards where the begin of the lo where the key space ID ranges span the whole key space, right? That's why it's called a key space. Each shard has one master, multiple replicas. So each shard is a traditional MySQL cluster, right? Um, and these masters and replicas can be located in one or multiple cells, right? So let's, I'll have you keep all this in your head. Um, and then now let's talk a little bit about sharding functions. So I, I told you that depending on the type of the column, you can choose different sharding functions, right? And so these seven functions are predefined sharding functions in Vitess. And I to uh, we talked about hash, and I talked about the Unicode loose MD5, um, which would, you would want to use for um, you know, text, text columns and so on. Uh, but you can also add your own custom sharding function. And that's, that's the coolest thing about Vitess. You can write about 40 lines of Go code, and now you have your own way of sharding your databases. And once you do that, all the other workflows about uh, that need uh, the information. I mean, so uh, directing query to the correct shard using, you know, using what I talked about in the previous slide, of course, works, but resharding works. And all other workflows where you need this information, they just, all of them work correctly as long as you get your sharding function right. So you're, you, you can create your sharding functions, and then you can, exp, you can uh, refer to them in the JSON that you use to tell Vitess about how you are sharding, defining your v-indexes. So that's, those are the sharding functions. So now that we have talked about these concepts, so before I start talking about the solution, how we solve this problem of uh, a jurisdictional databases, let me uh, pause here and ask you if you have any questions about what we have talked so far. Yes. Multiple column primary keys. Um, so the V index that we are going to use actually is going to use multiple columns. But in Vitesse, in general, your sharding column and your primary key doesn't need to be the same. Any other question? All right. I will assume that all of you understand this well now. And now let's talk about the solution, right? So the way we have modeled this problem is sort of two levels. We said that jurisdiction, we will make jurisdiction one level, and the actual, some marker of uh, uh, where a particular user or where a particular, particular piece of data lives, such as a country, a zip code, a state, or an area code, that would be the second level. So what we mean by that here is that um, examples of jurisdictions are EU, NAFTA, or California, right? So uh, let's say that if we were uh, trying to solve the problem for California's data locality laws, the two jurisdictions that I would have if, if most of my users are in, in, in the US would be California and non-California. Those would be my two jurisdictions. And then um, probably the geographical uh, location, which is represented by a data column, can either be an area code or could be a zip code. Um, it basically it allows me to locate that particular piece of data into a particular jurisdiction. In our case, California or non-California. In the example that we have shown here, we have four jurisdictions, uh, North America, Southeast Asia, uh, East Asia, South Asia, East Asia, and Europe. These are sort of, you know, they, they don't correspond to any geopolitical realities, but that's what we have used. But, um, so two levels level of jurisdictions that Vitesse doesn't know anything about, level of some column in some table that you want to shard, which um, can help us locate that particular piece of data in a jurisdiction is the second level. And what we do is we locate different shards in a cell bounded by a jurisdiction, 
That's, that's how we solve this problem. Um, all of this will become clearer when Dipti actually does the demo and shows you how, how we are splitting this up and so on. But at the high level, that's how we are uh, solving this problem. So what we, have so, uh, what we have built here can be used for solving uh, jurisdiction aware clusters fairly generally. Um, is, I'll let Dipti take it away from here. Before we actually start showing you the demo, we want to uh, talk about what the goals of this demo are and how we set up the environment so that we can demonstrate the uh, jurisdiction aware database that we are trying to show here. So for this demo, we've created a Wittes cluster that stores data for a given country in its jurisdiction. The client application doesn't need to know that uh, data is stored in multiple locations or where exactly the data is stored. So it's completely transparent to the client. Uh, for the demo itself, we have four made up jurisdictions and eight countries, real countries. Our jurisdictions are uh, Americas, Europe, East Asia, and South Asia, with two countries in each of these jurisdictions. The way we've designed the cluster is that we have created a Wittes cell for each of these jurisdictions, and we've named them according to the region in uh, Google Cloud where that cell lives. So there's US Central 1A, Europe West 3A, Asia East 1A, and Asia South 2A, because we are going to show the demo on GCP, or rather GKE. Uh, the key space that we are going to use is a sharded key space called userDB, and it has four shards. Each shard is resident in a different cell. The sharding scheme for uh, splitting up this database uses a custom index that we wrote for this demo called region index, and this index is based on the new multi-column index functionality. So everything you heard about Windexes earlier was you choose a column uh, as your sharding column, and you use that column to compute your key space ID, and the key space ID is never stored. So we have actually violated all of those restrictions in order to uh, build this custom Windex. So this is a multi-column Windex that uses more than one column. So it uses what would have been your sharding key if you didn't have the jurisdictional restrictions, and an additional column that represents the uh, geographic location that is restricting you in terms of where you can locate the data. And you take the, these two columns, in this case they are ID and country, and you map that tuple to a key space ID, which you store in a lookup table. People here that are familiar with Wittes already know what lookup indexes are, they are somewhat different from the Windexes you use for your sharding. And this is a combination of a lookup index and a sharding function that we are using for uh, doing the jurisdiction aware clusters. The region index looks up the region byte for a country using a map. And the source code for this is available, and you can follow the link to look at that. I won't go into that now. How do we map the key space to jurisdictions? We have split the one key space we have, userDB, into four key ranges. Key ranges are basically subsets of the entire key space, which, when combined together, span the entire key space. So they are disjoint, but the union gives you the full key space. So uh, the first shard, dash 40, corresponds to Americas. Then we have 40 to 80. These are hex numbers, by the way. Corresponds to Europe. 80 to C0 corresponds to East Asia, and C0 dash. C0 to whatever is South Asia. And within each of these key ranges, we have assigned specific values for the byte that we will use to locate the data based on the country. So US is 1, Canada is 2, France is 4, 0, Germany is 4, 1, and so on. The thing to note here is that each country has a distinct value, 
So we are treating them as distinct entities and at a future time, if you wanted to split by country within a jurisdiction or create a new jurisdiction based on country, you can do that. And that's one of the reasons to uh, make sure that every country has a unique code associated with it. The data specification looks like this. It's a simple JSON map that maps the country name to its uh, code or byte value. We have some sample data that we will insert into, this into the database that's uh, resident in the cluster that we've created. In the data, we have some personally identifying information, name, national ID. These are things that are usually subject to uh, laws that govern data residency and cross-border data transfers. And we have the column that tells us where uh, this entity should live, the location of the data. This is a, a quick look at the clusters that we've created. We have four clusters in four different regions, and you can see from the GKE console that each of them is in a different region, Asia, Europe, US. Uh, let's first take a look at what we have already deployed. This is the Wittes dashboard, and uh, we have two key spaces. There is a user key space with four shards that we already talked about, and there is a lookup key space, which is sort of a special key space or auxiliary key space that we are using to enable the sharding of data into the multiple regions. If we look at the schema for these key spaces, right now there is no schema, there is no data, there's nothing. It's basically empty. So we will start with this empty database or key space and then create a schema, create a V schema. V schema is what tells Vitus how you would like to shard this key space. And then insert some data into the database and see where it goes. You might notice that uh, I hope that's more visible. You might notice that when I look at shard dash 40, it's showing me which cell it belongs to. And you can see the name of the cell right there, that it's US Central 1A. And if we look at a different shard, that's in GCP Asia East 2A. Here we have the schema and V schema that we will be deploying into this cluster. In the user DB uh, key space, we have just one table customer. There is an ID which we will uh, auto, we will use an auto increment uh, for populating the ID. And the name of the customer, the national ID, and the country that we've already decided to use. Here is the V schema. In the V schema, we are specifying that this is a sharded key space and that there are certain windexes. We have just one windex called region VDX, and the type of this windex is region windex. And this region windex that we have written, the custom windex, takes certain parameters. There is a map that you use to map unique values for each of the uh, location identifiers. In our case, it's countries, so we have called it countries.json. Uh, you also specify how many bytes of the key space ID you would like to use for the region. When we use country, one byte is sufficient, but if you were to do zip code or area code, as Jitain mentioned, as possibilities, then you might need to use more than one byte. And this Windex was written to allow you to use one or two bytes. That's uh, an implementation time decision. And the Windex uses an auxiliary table to store the mapping of the ID and country to the key space ID. And this Windex is owned by the customer table. Now let's look at the customer table's V schema. The customer table has a column Windex, just one, and the columns that the Windex is based on are ID and country, 
and the name of the Windex is region VDX that we defined up here. So we are going to use that. And um, the ID column is going to be auto-incremented using a Wittes sequence. Wittes sequences give you auto-increment across shards, which you would not be able to do if you just use the MySQL auto-increment on multiple shards. In the lookup key space, we have the mapping table, which maps the ID and country to key space ID. And then we have the sequence. The lookup key space is not sharded. And technically, you don't even have to specify a V schema uh, when it's an unsharded key space. But just for completeness, we have included what the V schema should look like for the unsharded key space that includes a sequence. Now that we know what our schema and V schema look like, let's deploy them. Okay. So we will first apply the schema to our user DB um, key space. And then we will apply the V schema to the user DB key space. Then we will apply the schema to our lookup key space. And apply V schema to the lookup key space. And once that's all done, we can go look at what that looks like. So let's refresh this view. So now the lookup key space has two tables the sequence table and the mapping table, and the mapping table has no data. There's zero rows. And there are no indexes in this key space because it's unsharded. If we go look at the user DB key space and look at shard dash 40, it has a customer table, and the schema for that is what we just created with the four columns. And it has a schema definition, but no data. And it has one index called region VDX. We will see that the same schema has been applied to all four shards. The apply schema command in Wittes works cross shard. You only have to run it once per key space, and it will apply it to all of the shards. And uh, it will, in fact, apply it to all the tablets in each shard. So that's what the schema and V schema look like. The next step is to actually create some data. So let's look at what our sample data looks like. So we'll pretend that this simple SQL script is actually our application. And all it's doing is it's trying to insert some rows into uh, the customer table with a name, national ID, and country, and that's all. Yeah, and the thing to note is that there is no, the, the application is just inserting as though it's inserting into a single monolithic database, doesn't know anything about data locality, um, is completely unaware. Doesn't know that there is a concept of key space ID, you won't see the key space ID column showing up anywhere in the input data. So what we have done here is that we are sending this request to the VT gate that we have deployed in the US region, and the data is flowing to all four different regions all over the world. We, in this cluster, have actually deployed a VT gate in each region. So technically, you could have four clients, one uh, that represents the data for each region, talking to the individual VT gates. But this actually shows uh, in much more clearly how you can be uh, inserting the data from one region, but it flows to the correct region where it's supposed to go. Now that we've uh, run our insert script, let's see how things change in the dashboard. 
in the lookup key space, the mapping uh, table now has 16 rows. And if we go look at our uh, data key space, the user data, shard dash 40 has four rows. 40 to 80 has four rows. 80 to C0 has four rows, and so on. Each of the shards has now, uh, now has four rows of data in the table. One thing to note about this control panel UI is that the number of rows that we show comes from the information schema, so it is not always guaranteed to be exact depending on how fast you are writing to the database. It's only an approximate number. But because here we are writing such a small number of rows and we don't have continuous traffic, we've got the right numbers out of it. Now that we know that data has been inserted into all four cells of Vitus, let's go make sure that the right data has been inserted into each of the cells. We have 16 rows in the customer table, but where do they live? Let's examine the data one shard at a time. So Vitus allows you to uh, target your queries to specific key spaces and also to specific shards within a key space. So I could say use user DB and I would only see the data which is in this key space. I would not be able to see the data that's in the lookup key space. And I can also say use user DB a specific shard, and this will show me the data that resides in that specific shard. We have four rows in the dash 40 shard, and all of them are from the Americas region, which is what we wanted out of this cluster design. We can examine each of the other shards in turn. The next shard, 40 to 80, which is our Europe shard, has data that belongs to France and Germany. And the third shard has data that belongs to China and Japan, which were our East Asia jurisdiction. And the last shard has data that belongs to the South Asian countries. Now that we've seen what data we managed to populate into the user DB key space in all of these regions, let's take a look at what the lookup uh, key space looks like. So in the lookup key space, we have the ID to key space map table, which is what we are interested in. That isn't very readable, so let's convert the key space ID to hex. Ooh. <laughs> there. Yeah. Just exit out and and go back in maybe? Oh, should be fine. There, okay. So here we've converted the key space ID into hex and it doesn't really matter to us what this value is except you might notice something interesting about the first byte. So let's extract that first byte and uh, see what that looks like. Did anyone notice that these numbers are exactly the numbers that we assigned in the hex values that we assign to each country in the country to uh, byte mapping. And if there was any doubt, let's convert that to integer values. 
and those are the integer values in the mapping file. So uh, that brings us to the end of the demo. Let's go back to the presentation. Actually, before we go back, are there any questions about the demo? Sure, yeah, we can take some questions right now. Yes. The question is, can you do joins between the regions? In general, in Vitus, you can do cross-shard joins. Uh, when, you, when you are trying to achieve data locality, then all data that has to reside in that region better stay in that region in the sense that you shouldn't be trying to join that with another region. But you might have uh, some, some table that is relevant to all regions, like maybe the pricing table. And yeah, you can do a join across shards, which means you can do joins across regions. Right. So if I may do a little bit of a clarification. For example, let's say that you had an orders table, right? The orders table also, you would shard it using the ID of, uh, if you shard it using the user ID, because an orders also will have a user ID column in it then we will uh, also correctly locate the data in the correct shard. And so the user's row and user's orders will all be in the same shard. So the joins will end up happening uh, in the same shard. But as Ditti said, if there are some reference tables which you have in a different key space which are not associated with a particular user, cross shard you, Vites does cross shard joins for you after doing multiple queries in the background. And there is an advanced feature of Vitus called vReplication that will allow you to replicate your reference tables that are in an unsharded key space into each of your sharded key spaces so that you do not have to do a cross shard line. Yeah. Yeah. If we had more time, we would have liked to show a lot more on what you can do with jurisdiction aware clusters. You could start with a monolithic database, which already has all of your data, and reshard it and push it out into the various regions. You might want to move a country from one jurisdiction or cell to another. Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> or you might want to break a region into smaller shards just because you have too much data in, say, the East Asia region. Or even for a specific country. So the way this is done is that because we are using only one byte or two bytes at the beginning, for specifying a geographical location. If you have hundreds of millions of users in a specific country and you want to further split that data, all that works. Before we conclude, there are a few people we want to thank for making this demo possible. Uh, Dan, who's our Minister of Engineering at PlanetScale, was the one who first suggested the idea for this talk, and that was the day after we were done with KubeCon Europe in Barcelona, six months ago. And six months later, here we are with the demo. Uh, Anthony was instrumental in bringing up the Kubernetes environment that we built this demo on, and Sean created the slides for us. I, for one, would not have been able to come up with this really cool theme for the slides, so we are grateful to our friends who enabled us to uh, give this talk and demo here today. There are more Vitus talks, or rather, there is one more Vitus talk at this conference, and that's how uh, Derek Perkins of Nozzle, who's sitting right here, <laughs> migrated his 20 terabyte database from Azure to GKE in an hour with Vitus, and that's happening tomorrow, same time, 2.25. Any more questions? Yes. You will not be able to update the sharding column. Once it's set, it's set. Yes. Is the question, is there any way to make the country into an R-back node? 
uh, authorization in WITIS is handled separately, and uh, country-based authorization isn't something that we have really thought about, but that is something we could uh, look into. I, I think the way to, one way to implement that probably would be that um, VTGate can be asked uh, to look at specific key spaces, but not specific shards, right? right so, shards to watch. I so, don't know how it works, so there is a shards to watch command line parameter to VTGate, and you can specify uh, that a, a particular VTGate only looks at a particular shard. And so some, and each of them can have a different authentication, username and password configured. And so only somebody who has those, uh, para, uh, you know, th th those credentials can connect to that particular VTGate, which can look at the particular shard. That could be one way of doing it, if that's uh, what you are getting to by your question. If all of your data was sharded, then you would be able to just make VTGate watch that single cell so that anyone who's connecting in that region is only able to access data that belongs to that region. But typically, most people have some tables sharded and some tables unsharded, which complicates it. There was another question right there. So the question is, is there a way to audit uh, the queries to make sure that the region-based sharding is working? Uh, auditing is not a built-in feature in Vitus, so we haven't thought about this yet. But excellent question. Yes. The question is, do we support MariaDB or only specific builds of MySQL? We support uh, all variants of MySQL, Community Edition, Percona, Enterprise Edition, Maria, and Amazon RDS MySQL. RDS Aurora, RDS MySQL, and Cloud SQL on Google. OK. If, uh, one yes. more question. So that is a decision that should so be. Repeat the question. Yeah, sorry. So the question is what if uh, you chose a column with very low cardinality as your uh, sharding column? So the choice of sharding column is important, and in the past, you were stuck with whatever you chose, but we do have uh, experimental support right now for migrating from any sharding scheme to any sharding scheme. And the only reason we've called it experimental is because we haven't finalized the command line interface to this functionality. But it is already available in the most recent release of Vitus, and people have used it to uh, do reshardings. So with, with the new functionality, the migration functionality, you should be able to migrate from any sharding scheme to any sharding scheme. This is what we call the regret feature. Yes. Yes, so the question is we haven't talked about performance. What if the applications are also located in all of the regions? What effect does it have on performance? Uh, in the, even in this demo that we deployed, we have VTGate, the stateless proxy, deployed into every region. So the application can be uh, configured to talk to the VTGate or VTGates behind a load balancer in the same region. And that should minimize the latency. So the question is, is it going to happen locally? Is all the data going to be written only to the region that's relevant? 
if all of the data is in one region, then that minimizes your latency. But if you do have some data that you have to access in a different region, for whatever reason, keeping in mind the cross-border data transfer requirements, then that will add latency. So in this particular, if you were to deploy a cluster like this, the, uh, the lookup database, that is resident only in one of the regions. So from three other regions, even if all your users are from countries in the other uh, jurisdiction, you're still doing a round trip for generating an ID and mapping in one region. But even that lookup database can itself be sharded. Um, right. So, um, yeah. And you can use the identity built-in sharding function to shard it based on the key space ID so that it matches one-to-one -one with your actual data. And it resides in exactly the same way as your real data. Yes? The question is, if we have a query that doesn't have the sharding column, will it fan out to all the shards? Yes, it will. Yeah, it does a scatter gather. So when uh, Deepthi ran select star from customer, it, that actually did a fan out and gather and showed you the, all, all the rows from all four shards. So order by is, the, is a simple query. So what we do is we send the order by to each MySQL and do a merge sort at the VTGET level and show. But there may be some complex queries where you're doing group buys and order buys, which need all rows in VTGate to satisfy that query correctly, and we just don't support it. There is a list of queries um, uh, which we don't support be exactly because of that reason. Yes. The question is, what about stored procedures? I don't think we support stored procedures. Well, no, so the thing is that if you have stored procedures which only uh, work on data that is in a single shard, they will continue to work. Vitesse itself doesn't support it, but you can create them uh, uh, by connecting to the MySQL D by itself, and as long as they are, it, it works on the, in the context of a single shard, they continue to work. Um, but we don't have support for stored procedures that work correctly in data across shards. So you will still be managing them outside of Vitus, and any jobs that you might have running outside of Vitus can continue to run. We are out of time. We'll take any other questions uh, you might have once we are off the stage. Yeah. Thank you all for Thank attending. Thank you for coming. <laughs>